Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back. Well, we have the Blackstar Insider software. Uh, this is for my Blackstar ID Core 10 version 2 uh, skull lamp. And uh, this is the original software. Uh, they since upgraded to a new program called Architect, which believe it or not is actually M1 uh, ready to rock and roll. So, yay. Um, at least as far as I know it's M1. Um, I should actually check the application out to make sure it's M1 or if it's dual or what. Um, see, so get info on that. Um, yeah, it's actually Rosetta or M1. It's universal, so um, we're all good to go either way. Um, anyways, um, with the software on the PC, this is on my HP laptop, which is where I prefer it anyway, but um, with the Insider software, it will not work beyond Mac OS Mojave, uh, according to Blackstar. Um, we'll, so it won't work with Catalina, Big Sur, or any of the other new OSs, and definitely is not going to fire up uh, or even want to even think about trying to install on an M1. However, I did try it on my 2009 iMac with High Sierra, which is definitely within the OS's it supports up to Mojave. And that's no avail as a nightmare. And on the PC as well as on the Mac, you do require Silverlight, which Microsoft discontinued a couple of years ago, about 2020, 2021. But you can still download it from third-party sites. You will need the most recent version 5 of it, 5 point something or other. Which, not a problem, works great on the PC, as you can see. Um, but uh, they do have a newer program out. And I do recommend learning to use the program. It's going to give you some benefits. First of all, you are now going to have access to base, mid, and treble EQ, plus the IFS, while you're tweaking patches. Which is very important to have that full EQ access because you don't have it on the amp itself. All you have is IFS for your EQing. So it kind of puts you between US and bridge and everything in between. Um, this allows you the IFS plus your main EQ when you're using the software. Also, not to mention any firmware updates will also be automatically done. Um, now, in this little area here, you have a little diskette icon. That's for saving any current patches that you create yourself. Um, by default, you are in manual mode too, by the way. Uh, with this little button on the far end, a little star wheel, this is where you can save layout on exit, uh, show information messages, auto um, arrange audio tracks, uh, amp model tells you what it is, tells you what your current firmware is. Overdrive 1, Overdrive 2, Noise Gate currently is turned off. Stereo Wide Stereo or Super Wide Stereo is currently turned on. You can shut that off if you don't want that. Remapping Mode, Speaker Muting Capability as well. Okay, so that gives you some extras right there. And I love the layout of the pedals. Um, I think they're actually pretty cool the way they've set them up. Um, as far as doing other things like trying to click on a pedal and drag it to another side, no, we can't choose our own pedal arrangement. That's kind of a weak thing if you ask me. I mean, come on, even older boss stuff, you could at least kind of sort of do stuff, but kind of not either, I guess. You know, there are a lot of boss items like processor boards and whatnot. You couldn't change your pedal arrangement. But on the Katanas, when they first came out, I think we had a couple of, like, two or three choices. I think now we're up to, like, five or six choices of pedal arrangements, but it's still what they've chosen. We don't get to choose, okay? Same here. We don't get to choose nothing, period. Not even an alternate. So we're kind of like, this is what we got. Um, which, I mean, it's not a bad thing either, to be honest, you know? Um, every amp has its limitations, right? But all your patch stuff is down in here, uh, your effects area down in here. Uh, you've also got your tuner, online community. Now, online community is no longer accessible through Blackstar Insider. They do tell you on the website how to get patches, though, that are pre-made um, and get access that way, but otherwise, no. You can no longer access the online community, apparently. Here we have our six patches, which controls all six positions uh, on our dial um, for uh, saturated lead, US overdrive, 
hot rotted dry, vintage crunch, um, chiming US clean, and clean funk. These are their patches, okay? You can do your own as well in the manual mode. So you're overwriting stuff, okay? Um, from the best of my knowledge, that's what you are doing. Um, but you can always factory reset the amp anyways at any time. Now you can choose to just use your mouse um, and change between things if you like. Or you can go right to your amp, depending on how far your amp is away. In my case, it's about five feet away. Um, and I can just change positions this way uh, on whatever I need to do. And I get more actual precise control uh, with turning the knobs. So I think turning the knobs is a better idea than trying to squawk around with a mouse. But this program does work with Windows 7 right up into no problems with Windows 11 here on my HP laptop. But you do need to download that Silverlight, so you're going to find a copy of that. The Insider program, which is the most current version for Windows, um, so most up-to-date version, will be the one that they have immediately on their site. There are, There is an archive where you can download older versions, especially if you're still running a really super old PC, uh, and you might need the older version software for some reason. But... Otherwise, if you're running Windows 7, you should be just fine with the newest, either way. But you still got to get that silver light package uh, somewhere off of the internet, which I did find. Now, I also found, of course, that even on my 2009 iMac uh, running High Sierra, which is within the specs for the Mac side of the software, um, I can't get it to work, and I have not yet figured that out. However, there is salvation on the horizon for all of us. And that is the new version program. Now, Blackstar Insider, it doesn't matter if you bought your amp new or used. You don't have to register with the company. None of that garbage. And you can just download Insider software, which is what I originally did. And then I heard about Architect. And then I checked into that on their website. Now, that does require you, by the way, to register your amp, which means you need to take the serial number off the back of your amp. You're going to need your name, your date of birth, all that usual garbage, okay? Um, password, user ID, because you've got to create a new free account, which is free. Um, you're going to need the sales receipt from the company that you purchased your amp from. Even if you bought it used um, from a music store, you need to provide that piece of paper, okay? Um, now, I don't know if they accept sales receipts from stores that are not Blackstar dealers. I bought my Blackstar amp from uh, Acclaim Sound of Music. They are a Blackstar dealer, so therefore I know that that part is fine and legit. Now the other thing you notice here is our interface is a little bit different now. Okay, Now we have little drop down menus to swap between different effects. But we still only have uh, four different delays. Um, we've got four reverbs. And we have these uh, four modulations. But then we also have other preamps or amp models um, that are part of even the manual presets. So we can have a very clean, clean tone. We can have a clean, brighty tone. We can still have a crunch in there, that sort of thing. Uh, overdrive 1, overdrive 2, all that. We can adjust gain and volume. But we can also adjust bass, mid, and treble. So we can still go beyond what the amp physically has for knobs. So we will have to control bass, mid, and treble with our mouse. Um, but the IFS control on the amp, we can just turn it if we wanted to. Or we can use our mouse on this program as well. It's no, no different. So we're okay either way. Now this program, um, you download Architect once you're all set up and registered. Um, and where you go, this is your save thing to save your current patch you've created and whatever patch voice you're on that's where it's going to get saved to okay um, you also have patches here local patches you have the community as well um, now I think we can get back on the community now that the software has been updated I haven't checked that far yet but we should be able to um, so I'll have to look into that at some other date uh, of course we have our main device patches um, here, if we click on this little guy that tells us about the architect community, we have to log in and register. Um, 
and that's just the normal stuff there. That's not a big deal. Uh, at least they don't ask for your firstborn on this one. Um, now when we go into the little settings wheel here, we get audio. Uh, noise gate is off by default, by the way. Super wide stereo can be flipped on or off. Remapping mode, speaker mute. So we have the same sort of features. A little different layout on this program. Um, I'm kind of not sure if I really like the layout on this one. Uh, but I'll have to get used to it because if I want to use the amp even on my Mac, Architect works perfect on the Mac uh, M1s, which will also cover your M2s, M3s. So we, they did upgrade to a different program because uh, this program also supports other uh, of their amps as well, not just the version 2. This software is version 3, but it's also backwards compatible with other versions of their amps as well. Uh, so it is a new program for everybody, uh, pretty much, I think, to take advantage of. Uh, under General, we have Show Slider and Volumes, Randomizers, that sort of stuff. Feedback, Restore, so you can restore your patches and settings without having to do a key button combination thing. You can just click it and restore all the factory patches back to the way they were. Um, the About area, of course, it tells us our model of our amp, what it is. ID Core version 2, and of course our current software, our firmware version is actually version 1.02. If we click on Info here, it tells us no new firmware is available right now. Your ID Core version 2 is up to date. Current firmware is, latest firmware is, and so we're all up to date. Which is nice because when they do updates, they update the firmware, which is kind of really nice. And it's just kind of like done like instantly from the looks of things. But this is the program that you want to run. You don't want to go backwards to the other one. Um, if you have even an older Mac, um, you should be able to run Architect without any issues because Architect is um, on the M1. It will run fine on the M1, but it also uh, can go backwards to Rosetta, which is for Intel Macs. We have our translator called Rosetta on the M1s. To allow us to run Intel based apps so it's a universal app it's Intel or uh, M1 processors on the Mac side or it's straight out PC period on the PC side okay now you don't whether you're running Mac or PC with architect you download it you open up the zipped file and you just fire up the program even this had no installer uh, which saved a lot of time and pain in the butt stuff um, so I was quite happy with that now, it says manual mode here. I haven't even clicked on this, but um, this should put us between their uh, current patch name, manual mode. Um, I don't see what it's really pulling off here. It's definitely, because it doesn't say manual or preset mode. I don't know. Uh, still working on some stuff. Okay, but I want to at least show you what I've learned and how I've gotten this thing figured out. Now, before we go, I do want to mention uh, something too. Uh, I, I'll, I'll do another video another time with doing some programming with this to make a patch. Because um, there are some patches I actually would like to make myself and just no time on this video. This is more like a tutorial tour thing. Now, with your USB cable thing, alright, you cannot plug any USB cable that goes between your computer and your amp into a USB extension or the amp will not be recognized. You cannot plug into hubs either or the amp will not be recognized. I actually tried to plug the cable, which is a 15 footer that I have now. Um, I plugged it into my hub on my Mac and it said, nope, <laughs> not gonna connect. Yet Architect runs on my Mac, but even though it's a hub, it's still treated the same way as a USB extension cable would be and they don't like it. So you need to order yourself because you don't get USB cables with the, with the Blackstar amp. So you have to order your own and it's a, it's a mini B USB connector. Um, I've talked about this in another video. Um, so you need USB A to USB mini B uh, for the amp side but you need the cable length that you're gonna require. I bought 15 footers, works out perfect for me, okay? Um, so, <coughs> but it won't work 
if you have a hub or a USB extension cable. So you need to order that specific length of cable you require and only run it right from your computer direct to the amp. It's the only way it's gonna work for you, okay? Uh, so if all you have is short cables laying around the house, hop onto Amazon, it's the only place you're gonna find the cables. Search out the cables, get the, the, one, the longest one that you're gonna require, plus five feet. Always get an extra five feet of what you think you might need, and away you go. And you should be just fine and dandy, connect and go, just like this, and voila. Um, to connect to my Mac, I did have to unplug something out of the back because I only have two USB ports on the back of my Mac. Um, so I, um, un I uh, plugged direct into the Mini. It fired up the amp just fine. I went back to the hub, try again. Nope, ain't gonna work. So definitely will not work being plugged into a hub or, use a, or a USB extension. Anyways, that's all the jibber jabber jaga. So we will come back at a later time, um, show you a programming video, in which case when I do that, I think I'm gonna do that on my Mac and we'll do it as a screen recording instead, um, which is gonna give you a lot better visuals uh, and that sort of thing, okay? And it's a lot easier for me to do a screen recording on my Mac anyways for my comfort zone and be able to sit here and play a guitar and run the dials. Uh, unlike the laptop, it's a little more difficult, you know, to do all that um, at the same time. It's just, I don't know, it's an inconvenience thing. I've got a lot of stuff in my studio, so i got some rearranging to do. But anyways, until next time, um, also our tuner has changed, obviously, as well as our controls here. You'll notice that, you know, when you switch to a different thing, um, you're, you get different features of each pedal, so. But no pedal order changing. We can't change pedal order. And I don't even think we can do it with this version. No, we can't even drag and drop. So whichever version, you're stuck with the order of the way things are. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Catch you on the next one. See ya.